Well, as if last week's episode wasn't enough to make my eyes bleed like one of the southern vampires on True Blood, this week will most certainly turn what's left of my brain into an indiscernible mixture of oatmeal and tapioca pudding. And yes, I just made a reference to a show that ended almost eight years ago because my wife's watching it right now and I thought Vampires Crying Blood was ridiculous, but still more plausible than anything on this godforsaken piece of shit that I hate as much as when someone steps on my alligator shoes. So here we are, the episode where Asian Ivy meets Red Poison Ivy, a.k.a. the proper representation of the character that they've made Mary cosplay at for the past few episodes. And bringing Pamela Isley into the fold helped us discover that we have yet another pair of The Lesbians! (laughs) in Gotham to go along with the other million lesbians that already reside there. But let's up the ante a little bit this episode, shall we? And here's what we'll do to accomplish that. You have to take a drink every time you see the gift that says Man. (laughs) Because I'll play it once for the death of every generic white male in this episode. But I digress as I have an entire episode of this shite to go through, write the script, pull video clips, take over four to 500 screenshots, and spend the next 18 hours putting together a video that takes a little piece of my soul with every passing week. But I take comfort in knowing that my suffering and slow descent into madness has not been in vain, because you all derive pleasure from witnessing my masochism take center stage. So without further ado, here's episode nine of season three. Meet your maker. We start out down by the lake where two evil, cisgender, heteronormative white men are fishing and ignoring the catch and release policy when they're both pulled into the water and drowned by fucking vines. Because how fucking dare you catch fish to feed your family or yourself? If you weren't white, it wouldn't be so bad because you wouldn't be part of the problem. But no, you had to be two white males. And for that, you gotta pay. So Ivy drowns them both. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hit that gif. Man. And let's hit it again for the second cis-heteronormative white victim. Man. Then emerges from the lake and collapses on shore, where she's met by Renee Montoya. And Pam tells her that she thought the water would revive me. I was wrong. I need to get my strength back. I don't know if Pamela Isley, famous botanist, is familiar with the concept of overwatering your plants. So I'm taking it she went all Susan Smith out of sheer ignorance on behalf of the writers. Because that's the only way a character who's supposedly this brilliant can do something so stupid you're so stupid so montoya helps isley and they depart to oh that feels so super good ah i was a little frustrated batwoman that's just a car somebody's watching this show Ah, that like really annoyed me. Batwoman uh, is still doing quite well. It doesn't even look like Batwoman. Ah. <laughs> Peter, I really start to question why I've even friends with you in the first place. Ryan's in the cemetery talking to her mom's forest ghost and doesn't know what she's doing wrong. Well, it all started when you decided to take the fucking bat suit that fell out of the fucking sky while you were living in a... And living in a van down by the river! But I don't want my misplaced anger to reflect poorly on Javicia Leslie. She's a good enough actress and is probably a fun, caring human being, but her character Ryan is insufferable. Ryan? Although Mary's made a case for herself as the worst person on the show, there's some reason why I can't say that about her and I just can't put my finger on what that reason is. Let's travel to the polar opposite end of the spectrum. Luke is shirtless and doing pull-ups, which would be impressive if he A, didn't weigh 120 pounds, and B, Sophie tells him that if this was the real world, he'd be guilty of a serious HR violation. And Luke replies with, Good thing it's not the real world. He was a retard. And Sophie says he's breathing like Darth Vader. And making me feel bad about that bagel I had for breakfast. Oh, calm your tits, Sophie, you're a lesbian. 
Although she's got to be pretty bent about the fact that Montoya is dumping her for a redhead, which has to be considered some type of hate crime at this point. It would be somewhat acceptable if Montoya left Sophie for Asian Ivy, even though by college admission standards, Asians are considered white adjacent, therefore they garner no clout as it pertains to diversity and inclusion quotas, but in this instance, it somehow feels like they're applicable for the aforementioned box checking. But we see Luke attempting some boxing because he's such an accomplished fighter and he has a grudge against Marquise pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid. And Sophie asks, is this like because of Marquise pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid? So long, gay boy. Meanwhile, at the offices of strong independent black woman who don't need no man industries, CEO Jada Jett enlists the help of old friend John Diggle, who I only know because I've seen about five or six episodes of Arrow. But he's here to help Mike Tyson's former punching bag in her battle to save her son from bad writing that could transform a regular sociopathic narcissist Marquise, pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid, into something much, much worse. Well, get what you fucking deserve. A checkbox one-dimensional villain named Black Joker. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Next, we rejoin Pamela and Renee in the woods, and Ivy remarks that sunlight isn't regenerating her quickly enough, and Montoya then admonishes her for killing the two fishermen in the beginning of the episode, even though they were disposable white males. We basically get lesbian drama and Ivy making Montoya feel guilty for locking away for 10 years, but no water, no sunlight. Yada, yada, yada. And probably out of sheer disgust with how fucking annoying and incessant Ivy is about the guilt trip, Montoya finally tells her she knows how to get her power back. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Ryan meets up with Luke and Sophie at Montoya's office and comes bearing coffee, but brings one for Luke and not for Sophie. And Sophie, of course, calls her premature. And Ryan makes a catty remark about Sophie's girlfriend Montoya these duping them and freeing Pamela and just because Sophie has no self-control when it comes to scissoring and has to get laid by a different lesbian or she'll die. So this is happening. Oh, this is hot scissoring. I think Ryan is just pissed because Sophie gets laid more than she does and all Ryan wants to do to Sophie is scissor me timber. So anytime Sophie rubs Jinies with another lesbian, Ryan gets ultra jealous. Luke is commenting that there's two dead fishermen, so they can assume that OG Ivy is to blame because innocent Mary could never kill anyone. <laughs> Luke tells Ryan he made a tranquilizer dart for Mary. Got a fucking dart in your neck. Sophie, the massive slut, tells Ryan and Luke she found Mary and Alice in a national forest. This dialogue gets just absolutely atrocious here. Ryan says to Luke that she's down to go if he is, and Sophie says, oh God, just. Just watch. When black people go into the woods, they usually don't drown. <laughs> Ryan remarks that black people never write those movies. Fuck me, right? Luke has a look on his face like he pissed himself because he's a scared little Doesn't even look like a bitch. The president and CEO of strong independent black woman who don't need no man industries, Jada Jet, tells John Diggle she wants to hire him to be head of her security detail to protect her and Ryan. She refuses to lock up Marquise pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid at Arkham. Diggle tells Jada that he thinks the joy buzzer is out there again. And Jada tells him she plans on jolting. Okay, now here's back to the horrible shit writing that the CW has. And mind you, the writer's room blocked me. Jada plans on getting the joy buzzer. Jolt or shock, black joker, Marquise, pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid, with the buzzer again because the doctors told her it would re <laughs> reawaken his empathy. Another jolt would reawaken his empathy. She. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> this dumbass shithead, look at John Diggle going like, I cannot believe this fucking retarded ass bitch just said that shit. 
What fucking doctor told you that? Dr. Hartman from Family Guy? Uh, Cancun, actually. Thanks for asking. Just got back. Back on the beach, Montoya is trying to use the power of the sun in the palm of her hand. Where have I heard this before? The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. To try to summon Mary back to her so she, so she can use her power to heal Ivy. Mary, of course, has procured iced coffee for her and Alice free of charge, blah, blah, blah. And then you notice not only is Mary wearing a green coat, she has her Asian Ivy stripper outfit on in the middle of the day, looking like a hoe on the stroll, but mind power of plants summons her, so she drops her freaking coffee and probably doesn't even bother to pick up the plastic cup either. Fucking litter. Where's Captain Planet when you need him? <laughs> Meanwhile, the road trip for Sophie Ryan and Cuckwing Fox is made even more awkward by Sophie, who decides this point in time is the best time to admit how much of a massive whore she is and how badly she screwed up by trusting Montoya and protecting her and says, seriously, my bad. That's her That's her apology. Ryan and her keep arguing about Montoya and they almost run over a generic white guy out in the woods of Vancouver, I mean Gotham. They get out to help our disposable white male and Vines destroy the SUV, pull it into the woods and Ryan, Luke, Sophie and nameless generic white male victim all flee as the vines come back after them. At this point, if you can't see the writing on the wall, you know this white dude is gonna get smoked, but it's not a matter of if he dies, but when he dies. Ryan and the generic white guy trip, he gets crushed and impaled. Like I said, it wasn't if, it was when. Cue the man. So the funny thing we notice is that Luke was running behind Sophie and carrying only the rifle, whereas Ryan, a 110 pound woman, and he's making her help carry the injured man. If you didn't already know, if you still had a shadow of a doubt, you should consider it confirmed by this scene that Luke is a complete and utter useless piece of shit. So three remaining morons are holed up in a cabin. Luke then admits he's absolutely worthless, states his failures out loud, and says, I'm not a hero. And the girls, of course, have to build him back up, but in a catty manner. Gay! Upon returning to her tent, Pamela is asked by Montoya what happened. The fact that Ryan, Sophie, and Luke are out in the forest causes an argument because Renee urges Isley not to kill Ryan. Because while it may have been Batman who stopped her initially, Ryan isn't Batman. She's a black woman and you cannot do anything to her, you redheaded bitch, or they'll race swap you and make you black. Don't it! Also, it wasn't even Batman who took down Ivy in the first place. If we remember, Renee Montoya injected Isley with the serum that allowed her to be entombed for 10 years underneath the Batcave. No male character is allowed to best a female in anything, anytime, anywhere, in a movie or a television show. They've effectively neutered Batman in this name of intersectionality. I think I can sum up the show for you with one word. Nothing. John Diggle and Jada are at Montoya's office, which is obviously unoccupied at the moment because she's out on her lesbic and camping trip with Poison Ivy, and they break in. We'll come back to this. Montoya's wall is a shrine of all the rogue's weapons, and Jada, for some reason, thinks Batwoman is somehow responsible for the Joy Buzzer incident with her son Marquise, pronounced Marcus because he's fucking stupid, a.k.a. the new black Joker. But hey, let's have both of these black characters just be really, really good at breaking into stuff. Mary and Alice are in the car and Mary has a headache caused by the plant communication from Captain Planet and Alice warns her that it probably won't go well if she meets Poison Ivy. Mary persuades her to go and meet up with Pamela and talk to the woman who gave Mary her power. This, these scenes are so short and stupid I didn't even want to do a paragraph on them because it makes me want to. <laughs> Back at the lesbian love shack, Sophie is yelling at Ryan about how Ryan doesn't like her. And Sophie is just complaining because she hasn't gotten to scissor Ryan yet. Oh, we're scissoring! And then they argue over a shot of tequila like a couple of white sorority girls in Cabo San Lucas. Because Sophie wants Ryan to get drunk so she can scissor her, and Ryan's like, You're not getting this, men, you filthy slag. Neither of these two fucking idiots notice the vine coming under the door, as all of a sudden Sophie is sucked back against the wall and pinned there. Luke hits the vine with some salt out of the uh, invention that he made, which I really didn't give a fuck about, and it releases Sophie. Luke tells Dumb and Dumber that all the countless spores in the forest are Pamela's sensory glands, and she can basically hear everything. So their bickering led her right to them. And the salt that was in the back of the truck earlier is gonna be a key to stopping Pamela in her attack on the morons in the cabin. 
In the car, Alice and Mary, of course, talk about feelings because this is the CW. What else would they talk about? What else would they fucking talk about? Mary tells Alice in each other they've found the sister they've always wanted. And Alice wants to take a tire iron from the trunk and beat Mary over the head with it. No, she wants to make sure Mary's safe. And Mary uses her Asian Ivy powers to put Alice to sleep and go meet with Pamela and have a little red on lesbian or lesbian Asian hookup. I, I don't know, but they're all fucking lesbians. This is Lesbos! There's a scene in Montoya's office in the basement of City Hall where Diggle and Jada are talking. Two hours later. She finds the joy buzzer in a small lockbox, and I just really didn't give a fuck about this scene. It was so worthless other than they found the joy buzzer in the lockbox. It was just them sitting there after breaking into an office in the basement of City Hall and acting like nobody will ever come down there. They're perfect. They're sitting there drinking fucking beer. But I've talked about this scene longer than the scene actually went on at this point, I think. Back in Deliverance Country, as Alice put it, Mary runs into Montoya, who shoots her with a tranquilizer dart. I might as well get some mileage out of this one, huh? I know from a in the cabin, Ryan puts on the bat suit to go out to the truck to retrieve more salt that can be used against the plant vines and Cuck Fox's little toy cap gun he made that shoots fucking ice melting salt, which... Are you fucking high? Out in the forest at night, a hapless white father and son are out camping and happen across an unconscious Mary, who the father attempts to help and is rewarded for being a good Samaritan by being crushed and thrown like a pale-skinned bearded lawn dart across the forest. And had it not been for the fact that he was white, he may have survived it. The events, of course, leave the son fatherless, but nobody cares because they're white. Yeah! Also, this means we get to use the GIF again, ladies and gentlemen, so without further ado... Man. The crux of Ryan's difficulty in retrieving the salt is that her arms are too short. <laughs> this is the most brilliant thing that the writers can muster at this point of the episode. When my ass is hurting from sitting in this chair so long, recording this dialogue, and watching this shit show, but hey. The little kid shows up and yells for help. He's like, oh my god, it's Batwoman! And the vines automatically raise up and chase her into the truck. And she talks on the comms to Sophie, who's also a massive fucking whore, and tells her to blow up the truck. Now this, you have to suspend your disbelief for. But keep in mind, Sophie is quote-unquote a sharpshooter. And they have a shotgun that they found in the cabin because Luke Fox, the ineffectual weak beta male he is, lost the gun they had. But keep in mind, that's not how any of this works when this explodes. But one shot, the truck blows up. We don't even know where they hit it. But she hit the truck, and it blows up. The Ryan's inside of it, and unharmed, of course, because the cape and her weave are probably fireproof, which I didn't think weaves were fireproof, but I don't know. There must not be any... I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not a doctor. And Luke dives and saves the little boy, who says... <laughs> Sophie and Ryan are having a lover's quarrel, and Sophie, the massive fucking whore, just leans in and kisses Ryan. So, ladies and gentlemen... Here it is. The lesbian! Damn! Damn! Luke goes to visit his dad's grave and talks because that's all anyone does us in this fucking show is talk, 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 and whine and try to act like you're finally a big boy until John Diggle shows up and Luke gives him back the transmitter cube he wanted him to try and open, but Luke couldn't do it because he utterly fails at fucking everything. Diggle tells Luke to let Batwoman know that Jada found the fix and needs her help to save Marquise, pronounced Marcus, because he's a fucking retard. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Alice wakes up in the car and ventures out into the woods looking for Mary. But she doesn't find Mary, she finds her phone. And then finds the boy's dad impaled on a tree because remember the white guy who tried to fucking help Mary? Yeah, well his kid doesn't have a father because Mary's a narcissistic cow and just murdered him as opposed to asking him, hey, what is it you need? Bullshit. Pamela and Renee meet up in the forest and of course they're talking about fucking feelings again until Mary comes walking up like a child who wanders in in the middle of a movie and wants to know what the fuck is going on. It's fairly clear that Pamela is going to kill her or so we think think and absorb her energy and take her power back but no but no ladies and gentlemen we get a weird sequence where pamela kisses mary's forehead and they're surrounded by a green aura like rick james with his orange and charlie murphy's true hollywood stories in the days of old on Chappelle's show i think it's because they're just both the lesbians 
<laughs> so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Meet your maker. This episode almost made me want to meet my maker. It was so bad. You know, the, the logic and reasoning and character motivations. I don't even know why I bother to try to even discuss those because they're so non-existent with these stupid characters written by these stupid fucking activists and this asshat showrunner Caroline Dries. Ladies and gentlemen, I have worked on this video since 8 o'clock yesterday morning. It's around 6.57 p.m. Eastern Time. You know what? I'm going to eat my Thai food now. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for subscribing. Continue to do so. Smash that like button. Hit the bell for notifications if you subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Join us for our live streams. 8.35 Eastern Monday nights going in raw. 9 p.m. Eastern Wednesday night live at the place to be. I'm Etepo Kuin of the place to be reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, it's better to burn out than to fade away.